Hello, I'm Jürgen Bellmann from Sophistic. Today I want to show you the exact analysis of a simple steel girder for lateral buckling, but including the eigenstresses of the hot roll section from the production. Here we see the final stress distribution in midspan, the compression zone in the flange, after plasticity. And this plasticity comes earlier if we take into account the eigenstresses from the production. Here we see the eigenstresses from the Eurocode 1993. We see a compression stress in the flange edge and when we apply this in sophistic shell elements, we get this picture for the distribution of the eigenstresses. Now, how to input all this? The first question is, shall we use a beam analysis or a 3D quad analysis? Of course, the first idea is to use a beam section but we cannot input the eigenstresses inside the section with Sophie load. So the only way would be to define different materials here and to shift the stress strain curve for every material. But this is also very complicated and not so easy to understand. So I show you the way how to analyze it with a 3D quad mesh. We see it here. The advantage is that you automatically can take into account the warping of the section because the quad elements in the flange are automatically eccentric and the section can also work not in plane but could also get out of the plane. Here we see the eigenstresses that I introduced here in this quad mesh and we see in every quad element here I took a different pre-stress but constant in one element. So I made here groups, group 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and every group gets a different pre-stress. On the next page we see the finite element node numbers. I decided to use centric quad elements with a node in the center and started with node number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up to 9 the center and 17 on the left. In the bottom plus 20, 21 up to 37 and in the web 41 up to 47 and so on. In reality, of course, we have here a little thickness and so I decided to use the Xi value for the web starting with Xi equal 0 to Xi equal 1 at the lower part of the steel. From this part, 41, to node number 9, I use a simply coupling. For the flange, I use a Xi on the top, starting at 0 up to 1. And we can define the Xi values on the top with a simple array. We see here the array is Xi top from 0 to 9. 0 usually I don't use, so Xi top equal 1 is 1, that is the outer part. And the next one, 0, 9, is node number 2. We see now here the input in Sophie load, where we have group number 1 getting a strain input, epsilon x, and this epsilon x is just the maximum sigma I want to apply combined with the E modulus. So we can easily make the input for the first group that is the outer quad element, using the Xi on the side, that is 1.0, plus Xi of the next node and making the average of it. And this average strain is 
for group number one and so on up to group number eight. We only have to input the maximum sigma at the boundary. On the next page we see how to input the pre-deformation. Of course we have to apply a pre-deformation. Maybe the pre-deformation is length divided by 300 or you can also use length divided by 1000 if you want. We just make a simple wind from the side getting this deformation including the stress from wind and then we can just use this load case for a pre-deformation in the command oblique where we select this load case setting the maximum deformation shall be length divided by 300 and so we get a stress-free pre-deformation. In the German input it is Xi for Schiefstellung. Now let's go to the input file. I use simple teddy but of course you can also make it an SSD or you can make your input with Sophie Plus graphical input. But here I have Sophie Mesh A because you have the full control over the node numbers. We have some general variables the height, width, total length and so on. And then here we see the picture that I already made with the C definition and with the node numbers. And then the most important input of the XE on the top and the XE on the web. If you are not used to work with arrays, you can use my video here where I explain something about Teddy arrays. Now we start defining the master nodes at x equals zero. If we go to WinGraph, look from the side and only take the first elements in 3D, we can look to the node numbers and we see here the node numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 up to 17, 21 to 37. And in the next plane we see we have an increment of 100. So the master nodes are here in the first plane. Also the master nodes for the web. Then we copy the nodes in x direction. Therefore of course we use a loop. We have first the nodes for the end axis, then the loop for the real span and then the axis at the end. And then we have defined all nodes in our system and we can use these nodes where we know the exact number of every node to define the quad elements. Now we have all data together and we can start with our analysis. We create a starting load case 101 where we first apply the stress-free pre-deformation. Then we apply the eigenstresses that we defined. No external load, dead load zero. And we analyze our system with TH3, full geometric nonlinear, and also take into account the nonlinear material in the quad elements using the ultimate limit strain curve without safety factor. If we calculate this, we get inside the section in load case 101 this stress distribution, so only the eigenstress. And if we look to the animator, we see this picture, so a pre-deformation, but the pre-deformation doesn't create any stress. We only see the eigenstress here in our elements. The next step is to apply the real loading. We have here defined a load case 901 with a girder load of 46.5 kN per meter. We now use in the system command the last primary load case. This primary load case includes the pre-deformation and the eigenstresses, so we only have to apply the new loading here because the eigenstresses are already in the primary load case. 
For the next load step we have to apply the loading because this is a real loading and not only an eigenstress. So we define the next load kiss 102, define a factor maybe of 0.2 and we calculate this load case with a new factor giving it a title and here you can also use this feature the title of the load case will be plus loading factor factor with this you can print the factor with six characters and two digits behind then we increase the load to 903 to 50% 80% 100% up to 107 this is a manual load increase because I often use it to get a feeling for the system. You know exactly, okay, I increase the load, what happens? At the end I show you the automatic load increase. But first look to the load cases 100, 2, 3, 4. In the animator we use a constant magnitude of maybe 15. We choose the next load case, next, next, next load case. And we see very nice how the lateral buckling of the girder increases. And also the color in the top flange we see is now concentrated here on the compression side. Let's go back. Here we see only the eigenstresses. Then eigenstresses plus load and here we see the eigenstresses nearly disappear but the yielding comes a little bit earlier when we also take into account the eigenstresses. We can also check this in our wind graph plots 101 eigenstresses 102 3 4 we see now the yielding starts at this flange outer side and if we increase the load we get here a full plasticity in the flange. Our program can also plot a load deformation curve with this command plot. We start with the first load case and just say our node in the center shall be plotted in the y direction. If we look to this result, that was this result, we see here the factor 0.2, we increase the load and the deformation uy increases very much until we come here to the failure. Then the next step would be to make an automatic load increase. We can use this command ulti, ultimate limit load iteration. We start with a factor of 0.2 and then the program automatically increases the load until the equilibrium is reached for the final situation. Now let's have a look to the report of this run. Load step iteration. We see we start with the load case 202 with a factor of 0.2 and this run was convergent and therefore the program automatically increased the load to 0.4, then to 0.7, then to 1.15 and this load case was not convergent. So the program automatically made the middle of these two values comes to 0.925 was convergent increases next was not convergent and so with this load step method we come to a final load step of 1062 that was the last convergent run here with the maximum displacement of 90 millimeters. We can now also plot the load deformation curve for this run and compare it with the previous. We see here the previous run came to 79 millimeters 
and the automatic load increase came to 87 millimeters, but the pictures are nearly the same. We have now finished our calculation and come to the result that the girder can carry about a load factor of 107 to the nominal load. If you want the input file for this example, please go to the ase.dat folder nonlinear quad. There you will find the eigenstress.dat file. Of course, you can also input the eigenstresses for a welded profile. So, thanks for listening and goodbye.